She knows yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. Let's see. Okay, we're live. I need to share it. It's us. Oh, wait, we're the one viewer? Uh -huh. That's how they count it? Cool. And I can keep drinking my drink and waiting for people to come. Mm. Mm. Let's see. We can just start working here. You working on something totally different today? Mm, new piece, but... Yeah. Same game, new piece. Same, same game. world. New same piece. game. Okay. We have new Joe. Piece. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. <laughs> yep, same game. We'll see what can what I can do here. Different color palette already. Well, no. Yeah, well, Different colors yeah, for this. In the same. But uh, I do have limited colors that I've picked for for the whole game. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So I have some ideas, but I'm not sure um, where this will go. Okay. Yeah. You know, painting creatures and monsters are, it, I think it's a lot easier. And I, I think my favorite thing to paint are, are landscapes. Mm -hmm. I think that's my favorite thing that you paint. <sighs> yeah. Is the landscapes. But, uh, you know. I feel like there are some things in this situation that are harder to paint. I'm going to maybe try to attempt some of those things, but I might have, it might crash and burn. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. So you're sampling from the, you're sampling from, from the another map. piece of art. From a, okay. Yes. From the map. From the board. Very cool. Welcome every, everybody. Yeah, we got, it looks like we have 13. The, di the data updates at different rates depending on where on the screen it is. So, so yeah. 11 or 13. We've got Arius and Joe. Hello, hello. Hey everybody. So today, I, for those of you just joining us, I am painting something else for the new game that we're working on. That's a super secret right now. Super. He hasn't teased anything anywhere, right? I mean, like nothing. This is the first look. These Gen Con live streams. Yeah. Yes, Arius, yes. From the board for the new game. There's Brenna. Hi, Brenna. Now we're ready. Hi. <laughs> Once Brenna gets here, then, then the party's really started. <laughs> Greetings from Switzerland. Nice. Hi. How Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I've only been to Switzerland one time, and it was only the airport. Oh, yeah. How was the airport? Same with you, right? Yeah. The airport um, was impressive, actually. I, re I remember thinking it was, it was pretty nice. Modern and beautiful and yeah. clean and anyway. Hi Charlie, happy to happy to hang out again. Enjoy the stream, yeah. So yeah, what can you tell us about this new game that you haven't? Switzerland is hot. Oh good. Or is that a good thing? Do you get humid and hot or just hot? We're ve it's very it's... hot here. We don't get any humidity, so it's a dry heat. Pretty pretty manageable. We like it. Yeah, in, <clears throat> in Salt Lake. So this morning we went on a hike uh, in the mountains and uh, 
it's funny because, um, you know, maybe about a 15 minute drive from our house, we can get up to the very, uh, you know, pretty high up in the mountains. And it definitely reminds me of like a European village up there. Yeah, yeah, there there are a couple small ski towns up there that that seem a little alpine. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, yes, he says it is humid and hot. Or actually, I don't know if it's he or she. Just Board Game Dungeon says, yes, Switzerland is humid and hot. Yeah, okay. Um, hi, John. Hi, Chase. Hey, Red Raven. Yesterday you were discussing why expansions were difficult to return to. Was that part of the reason for developing Sleeping Gods? larger from the beginning I think so um, you know now that we've done that I don't know if I could do that again <laughs> it's true do you it think that it was well, I think I, because it, it's true at the when we were making it I wanted it to be a huge experience I wanted it to be like a huge world to explore yeah. and so it seemed the right time to make an expansion but I think it was difficult to do everything at once. I think in some ways it saved time, but also there was like more risk for burnout. So I have to be honest, if I'm gonna look at how you work and how we work, I think I'd rather do what we did with Sleeping Gods over again because that seems to be the best way to get you (laughs) to do an expansion that just completely integrates with the base game. It's like if we do it right when we make the game, Then we can get lots of expansion content, but then you burn out. But if we wait and there's that window, then it's harder and harder to get expansion content for a game that has already released. Yeah. Interesting question. Very good. Let's see. Corey wants to know what hike we did. I don't even know what the name of it is, but it's up from Alta in Little Cottonwood Canyon. And we went to a waterfall that wasn't... It wasn't the end destination of the hike. It was just a point where we could stop with our three kids and say... We did it! Yeah. And then we turned around, so just hiking around in the ski resort there. Yeah, it was funny because there are no dogs allowed in the canyon. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we got up there, there was like, I don't know what they were doing, but there was like a pack of 20 dogs. And it seemed like a training session or something, but the, the whole time there were just dog barking. Yeah, there was a chorus. Echoing. It was a chorus of dog I think <laughs> it must have been like avalanche rescue training. Maybe. Or, yeah. I mean, all of these dogs, they were definitely working dogs. So, yeah. Do you guys ever go on a hike and think, wow, that would make a good landscape for the game? Whenever I see yes. the Alps, I often think about your artwork. It is very unique. Oh, thank you. Yes, I would say um, the hikes we go on definitely... Um, inspire me when I work on the games. Yeah. Okay. I should probably. <laughs> you should put something on that. I should put something brown on Brown background. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so day two of online Gen Con. Yeah. So we're past the setup day. We were joking yesterday that it was almost like setup. We moved some furniture in the morning, and then we were reminiscing about. The hot, unair conditioned Gen Con hall yeah. on setup day. But now it's like officially day one of, of the online uh, yeah. convention. Mm-hmm. So, let's see, what else were we going to talk about? Oh, we had lots, but <laughs> it depends on how much we can pull out of your brain. Um, we were going to talk about, um, oh, Alyssa's back. Hello. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Alyssa. (laughs) So we were going to talk about, um, some of our favorite games. Oh yeah, but I That we always like to play. That's true. How about just this? What is your, what is one of your favorite games that we didn't mention yesterday? Oh, well, this is a good story because one of my very favorite games is Caverna. And I, so here's the story, and I love Agricola and I love Caverna, but this is my journey, right? So we played Agricola first when we were first married, 
and I really didn't like it. I got so frustrated by it, so much so that Ryan ended up giving our first copy of Agricola away. And then we ended up getting Caverna, and we played it over a new year, and I hated it. But I was determined that there was something wrong with the fact that I hated it. So we played it two more times that weekend and just set it up twice and just went through the whole thing twice with three players. And by the end of the weekend, I, it was one of my favorite games. So <laughs> I remember don't when she don't said, give up if you don't like something it. the first time because I despised that game. I was so angry <laughs> and I was like very emotional about it. And by the end of the weekend, I honestly loved it. So don't give up on games. It's funny because I, I was like, please just play it one more time. I think you'll like it more. Well, and then after that, so we eventually bought another copy of Agricola, which I now love, and we've played a bunch. We played it over this last New Year. So, yes, it it's funny. Sometimes you have to give things a couple of shots. Yeah. Um, let's see. Are there online Gen Con promos this year? Um, no. Sadly, no, but I mean... We do have some um, promotional items on our web store. If you haven't already looked on there, maybe there are some things that you that you don't have or haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, so be sure to check that out. Let's see, when do you think Dean Feds will come to Europe? Very soon. Yeah, the, our licensing partners are working on it right now. So it's coming. Do you think that'll be... Oh, Alyssa loves Caverna. That's great. <laughs> oh, we're becoming Gen Con online buddies. I have so much in common. Food and Caverna and Gen Con. Okay, Brenna's answering John. We don't have any special promos. Pick up defense. Um, John Wing. Oh, what was... Oh, I don't know what Brenna's replying to on that. I can't see it. How old are your kids and what games do you like to play with your family? We have our son is nine. Um, then our daughter is eight. And then we have another son who's three. Yeah. And they have, they have really got, well, of course they love Megaland. Um, and we talked yesterday about how our oldest son loves Raptor. What's been fun is this summer they pulled out Horrified and they read the rule book and they set it up and they learned how to play by themselves and they taught me and we've been playing it a lot. What's funny is that I sat down with them to play it and like 5 or 6 months ago, right? Well, and then just recently. Or just recently too. And um, after a while they just get really they're really not focused on the game and they were goofing off a lot yeah. and so I, I I finally just threw up my hands and said, "Okay, I'm playing this whole game without you guys. <laughs> like, if you're not going to play, then we're done. So I sort of gave up. And then when I left, because I wasn't around, they totally figured it out and played it without me. And it was almost like it was better without me there. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> they're in a very independent phase, so they do much better when they feel like they're in charge of things. So they're in into games that are on their level um, or that they can figure out on their own. Our daughter loves chess. And they love to play card games. They love poker. <laughs> so, things like that. Um, John wants to know if you've played any of the Vital, Lacerda, or David Turchi? Tur How do you say this? So, I have well, I played. Know that you will I don't know, more than sadly. I do. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. I have, yeah, we've played um, recently. The one we've been playing is On Mars. Um, Okay, yeah. yes, that's another one we By didn't Vitalis list Serna. that we tried this summer yeah. during our We've played that game spa month, right? Like... Yeah. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've played it, um, I mean, for how long it is, I've played it a surprising number of times. Yeah, that's true, because you play with your brother. For me, I don't, I don't play a lot of, yeah. I don't get to play games a lot, you know, like, over and over again, so that one's been fun. I really... Um, I really like Ian O'Toole's uh, illustration and graphic design work on that. Ooh, the colors are fun. And, and the, the colors are really fun. colors are fun. And components such interesting components. Yeah. So yeah. on Mars, that was... That was a cool one. It's it's pretty heavy. It's a little like Caverna where I could feel at first that my brain was like, overload, so much to think about. But as soon as you get into the rhythm, then you really know exactly what you want to do. And yeah, so it's a nice... 
it's a nice game for a long afternoon. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, Brenna is answering. Micah says defense is really awesome. Highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank Micah. you. Arius says, as someone, or Arius, I'm not sure. As someone who is a self-taught CS5 user, I'm so impressed with your digital painting skill. Recently made my first large D&D map, and I wish I had half of the skills you're displaying here. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Awesome. Michael likes Megaland as well. Megaland's a great family game. Played all the time with ours. Oh, look, Russell's on here. My daughter is Brenna, and I play what she tells me to. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for multiple Asplins in the conversation. Brenna's got a fantastic family with whom she's very close. They're they, a fun, they play games fun all the time. Fun. But not just board games, they're very much into role playing as well. Brenna has expanded our role playing um, uh, uh, yeah, circle just quite a bit. Learning about new role playing games. Yeah. Like uh, we played. Uh, the, what was that called? Yeah, Brenna, what was the one called that we the, played at? Was it last one where we drew, we, where we drew a map. Table? We yeah, drew a map. Yeah, so fun. Um, Dang it, that, what was, was that, that was fun. Brenna will answer in like five seconds. I, it's on the tip delay. of my tongue. <laughs> I know. I have a terrible memory. Oh. She'll, she'll answer. Yeah. As a fan of your games since above and below, thank you for building the most unique and immersive open world games while keeping the gameplay strategic without being overly complicated. Thank you, thank Joe, you. for hitting every single note of what our goal is when we make a game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That's very kind. Yeah. John likes On Mars as well. Ah, the quiet ear, says the Brenna. The quiet ear. Thank you, Brenna. That was fun. That was very fun. Uh... Yeah. And Brenna also works on, like, when we talk about, you know, working on role-playing projects with the worlds that we have, you know, because that topic comes up frequently. People suggest that we uh, provide some role-playing options, and Brenna is definitely on that team when yeah. we brainstorm. Uh, la, la, la. Quiet Ear is a fantastic experience, says Arius. I'm going to go with Arius. Yeah, that was um, pronunciation, and just put that there. I think uh, you know I hadn't really tried anything like that, so that was cool. Um, plus, I I I think any game that has you drawing a map is, uh, <laughs> is sounds exciting. That's probably why I like cartographers. Although I with that game, I almost wished um, there was like even a little more flexibility in how the map looked. But I understand, you know, it's got to fit the, it's got to fit the grid. What if you were to buy larger grid paper and like really get, really get um, integrated with details? Yeah. Yeah. I you could try something like that. See, do you guys have the Rhine Locket map from Game Toppers? I bought the biggest size for my table. Really looking forward to it. Is that the oh, Haven nice. one? Yeah, it's yes, the big forest. Yes, we do. And we play on it all the time. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one we play on. We love that map. Yeah, and uh, we ended up using it for our homeschool for our kids, too. <laughs> right? Yes. That's so We set it out on the table. We moved the kitchen yeah. table into the front room. By the window, so they wouldn't be in, like, a dungeon doing their homeschooling during yeah. the shutdown. Aria says, speaking of role-playing games, did anything come of the playtest that happened last year? Well, that's kind of a... It's one of those many projects we have that's just sort of, like... Uh, in you know, on the shelf or in development, we we tend to try a lot of things and see what happens. And um, our projects that, seem to I be mean, like it, if you had a big that one, chart with a bunch of tracks in a board game, and you know every turn you take, you can move one cube up one track, but like you can't move them all up at the same time. So like when we get a moment, we move that <laughs> role-playing game track. cube up one on the track, and then we have to move on to something else. And then when we come back to it, we're like, oh yeah, this, let's yeah. keep going. So slowly but surely, there are just more ideas than we have the resources to put out all at once. Yeah. Okay. It would be fun to, fin to make a role-playing, you know, to publish a role-playing game, but yeah. yeah. Um, Corey asks, any plans for other playmat arts? We don't currently have plans, but, you know, we've thought a lot about that. 
And John says, have you played Dino World? It's like Cartographers, but you're making Jurassic Park. Ooh, Ooh. I have not. But I have, I think I saw, I saw um, pictures of that one. I'll have to check it out. And John wants to sign up for more playtesting. Yes. Oh, emails. thank you. <laughs> um, Micah, is near and far expansion number two ever going to be a thing? Is near and far expansion too? I know we put the number on the the box. So we talked about this a little yesterday. I, we did like that number one on that number lines. one. It it sets a certain expectation, and we have an idea for the expansion. I think it's a really solid idea, um, and it would it would change up the game quite a bit. But uh, yeah. Right now, we we have a few other projects we're working on, so it probably won't be this, you know, this year or next year. We may be at a slower pace with our children at home. For <laughs> it's a little bit harder to finish things, yeah. Although sometimes, sometimes we notice that when there's a little bit more pressure, that's really when we can get stuff out. Like if there's too much pressure, you know, it can really implode yeah. the process. But if there's just enough pressure, it's a little like that night before the big exam you just kind of get a lot of cramming in because you're super motivated yeah um let's see do you have any plans for a card only game um i would love to do that um i have a few prototypes like that um i've, I've always wanted to publish something like a like just a card only engine builder type of a game but, um, and I have some prototypes like that, but we, you know, I always get, I always seem to get stuck on something in a, in a card only design. So, so far, not yet. Mm. Okay. Joe asks, would you ever be willing to highlight your upcoming games production timeline? Like a company like Stonemeyer does. I think it's really helpful in planning our board game purchases. I, you know, I do like that, uh, Jamie does that. Um, I always think it's interesting to see, to look at that graph and... <laughs> oh my goodness, and then John replies, at Joe, you don't like random hits to your wallet when the Kickstarter pops up? <laughs> yeah, I probably should do that. The thing is, I feel like knowing how we are, um, projects change quite a lot and get shelved quite often. And so it's harder to do that because I feel like once I put it out there that something's coming, I've sort of made a promise. But um, it's not uncommon for us to drop a game even fairly along in development. So the question is, what's worse? Else. <laughs> to announce something and then never release it or to wait until we're absolutely certain it's coming? That'd be yeah. a question. Like even, you can even find games that I have made pages for on board game geek that we've never published because i thought we were going to publish it and then we didn't yeah it happens it's one of the benefits of being like a one-man show i mean you're not a one-man show no but, but ryan gets the steering wheel he's not like we're very flexible yeah. like as far as like you know i can say oh we're not going to do this thing right now and we have the flexibility where we can we can do that. Yeah, but that's our benefit. Let's see. Joe replies, um, "Ha ha, no." But I like to know that I could wait on something unknown in order to save for a known game from a solid producer. And mm. He says, "Oh, I agree." Ha ha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We actually with Sleeping Gods, we teased it for a long time and we worked on it for a long time. And actually it was quite an ambitious project and we got to the point where we weren't sure if we were gonna pull it off and we had to push through because we had committed. Like Ryan said, we felt like- There we were moments where I may maybe would have given up. May, so maybe that's an argument to uh, just announce commit, things. Just to commit and then get her done. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Appreciate the feedback though. Let's see, Lawrence. Lauren, Says any interest for more Megaland content? Hmm. Well, I'm. It would be. It would. It would be fun to make more cards. I think there's. There's definitely um, some design space to be explored there. Um, but we currently don't have any plans to do that. 
Let's see, what are your favorite mechanics to work with? I know that almost every Red Raven game has a city building or tableau building mechanic. Are there any other mechanics you want to try out? Um, I actually am fascinated with deck building, and I have a lot of prototypes that have deck building in it. Um, but we don't have that many games with deck building. I, I think City, City of, of Iron. Iron is the only one. Hmm. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I wish I could, you know, that, I feel like that's a, a, a mechanism that we could explore more. Hmm. Um, Joe replies to the conversation from before. I think I'd rather know you are working on stuff, even if it disappears and then something else reappears. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's good feedback. Thank you. Hello again, fellow Ryan. Oh, Ryan Clements is here again. Do you have a squirrel character drawing? He mentioned this yesterday. He's like, oh, draw me a squirrel. That'd be so great. <laughs> Squirrels are my spirit animal and is my BGG name and is also going to be a name related to my board game channel. Wow. You know, there are so awesome. many great animals and the fact that you do so many animal um, characters makes it really tempting. Like when you added the cat into Near and Far. Yeah. And so you could have a cat or a dog as your companion animal or like all these different animals popping up. It does make it fun to be like, hey, I really like hey. polar bears. Can you make a polar bear? I know. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe we'll have one show up in this game. <laughs> we, actually, we actually have a family of squirrels that lives in our backyard. So we have quite a... We have quite a little connection with squirrels mm -hmm. as well. They are very loud. They never shut up. I think there are a lot of cats in the neighborhood, so they're always sounding alarms. And the kids have named them. Anyway, squirrels. Yeah. Tangent. Okay, back to the comments. So, when will the next Kickstarter project be launching, and could you share any details about it? Um, oh, and hey, Brandon's here. He says, hey, that looks pretty good. You should do art for board games. <laughs> Welcome, Brandon. That's Ryan's brother. Yeah. Anyway, what's the next Kickstarter um, project? I, we will have a, a Kickstarter project probably in November. Oh, and Arius just, just looked it up. He says, wait, what's Exile? Just looked at the BGG listing. Yeah. And that's a new one. Is that the name of the game this art is for? Uh, it is. Working Although title. that Give game me. is going through some changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there will be a Kickstarter project this November, uh, October, November. Um, but I can't share any more deals uh, details yet. Mean. John says City of Iron is one of his favorite Red Raven games. Yeah, that's. Uh, I definitely have a soft spot for that one. Randy says, I love your art. Have you ever thought about making art for a video game or even a board game on PC or consoles? Um, yes, I would love to make uh, a... Uh, I would love to make a, a video game with... with uh, I've often thought about it, like even just making one in-house and... Uh, you know, finding, hiring a programmer and starting up a whole thing, but <laughs> I think that would be a little too ambitious. Every time I, I, I think about doing that, I, I get a little nervous and and uh, decide not to. But I I love video games, and you know, I've I've always wanted to make one. <laughs> oh, I love this. Emperor Mad says the platypus was way cooler than the cat. I totally agree. <laughs> I love the platypus. The platypus. Yeah. And I love the pack birds. Yeah. Those are cool. Um, let's see. Does your interest in deck building stem from your work with Dominion or before that? Well, it probably does. Um, I mean, I did play some collectible card games as a teenager, but um, I remember when uh, uh, I remember when I was introduced to Dominion um, right before I did the art for, you know, for the first card I did, I thought it was, you know, I was like blown away by the game. It was, it was a totally new concept, and I thought it was really exciting. Um, you know, Jay Tomlinson played it with us and and showed us the game. I, I remember he had yeah, like the cutout cardboard it was, cards. Yeah, it was published. Yeah, 
it's always great when a new design is so innovative. Like it's it's just so great for the industry in general. Like whenever some designer or even artist with a new um, approach to what board game art could look like, whenever someone pumps in that new excitement, that new idea into the industry, it just kind of livens everything up for everybody. So I think Dominion was a really impactful yeah. uh, game for sure. So we've got a little bit of an animal chat going on. Brandon's like, and eat the cat, right? <laughs> Russell says the cat oh made my me gosh. so happy. You can eat. I forgot. He's probably you meant can, you can eat yeah, the cat. You can eat the cat. You lose reputation, but if you, you can eat the food. cat. Um, let's see. Dingo's Dreams had a lot of animals. And oh dear. Uh, let's see. Oh, Russell, have you ever tried to pet a platypus? Have you? That would be an interesting story. And then um, Alyssa wants to know what our spirit animals are. Uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> a good question. That is a good question. You know, I could I could just say my favorite. I think people would already know that one of my favorite animals is. Um, well, I love frogs. That's why they're in so many of my games. Frogs. Yeah, Ryan's an amphibian fan. Um, probably, I would say like. A, uh, cat predators like wild cats I think for me you like cats <laughs> well I yeah. am such a dog person but I tell you what when I watch those nature documentaries I am like always on the side of the cheetah or the lion I'm like get that gazelle <laughs> like I really want the cat to I don't know and I'm not usually like I'm a real soft-hearted well you like, know animal person you but... see like they're they're young and they have to eat well, or they'll starve well, and Ryan always swore that if I was an animal, I'd be a cat. And I was like, no, I'm not. But it's probably true. So mm. I'm conflicted. Uh, okay. okay. You know what? what painting software? Okay, you're going to have to tell us your setup again. Um, I am painting with, uh, I'm using a uh, Wacom Cintiq tablet. Although the Cintiq is the, ta is the tablet that's a screen that you can draw on. Uh, and I am not doing that. I'm just using it as a tablet on the desk, and I'm uh, so it's basically just a it's just like a an, another what's there is the Intuos. It's like the Intuos, and uh, I'm using Photoshop to paint. That's my favorite painting software program. Cool. Um, let's see. Have you played Eon's End or Dungeon Alliance? Might be my favorite deck builders currently. Oh, I have not yet, but I've had a lot of people recommend those to me. Um, Board Game Dungeon wants to know if you are going to include more minis in the games going forward. Um, that's a that's a tough one. Um, I think we will, but I don't think we'll ever do a very minis heavy game. Um, oh, that reminds me. I skipped something. Not to like... <laughs> no, I... Don't draw any conclusions from my connection here because I'll get in trouble with Ryan. Okay. But someone asked if there were any... Yeah, Corey asked. Any new, any new games featuring other designers in the works? Love your designs. I'm just curious. We do. Can we have one that we're going to publish. That's by T. Alex Davis, who co-designed Deep Vents. This one is, is just his design. He's been working on it for a long time, and it's a really fun game. We love it. Yeah, it's called Night Watch, and it is a team. As in like K-N-I-G-H-T. Yeah. Night Watch. It's a team game um, that, you know, we've never done a team game before. I've tried to design some, but this is a great one. So one team uh, gets to play the knights defending a monastery, and the other team gets to play these monster demons that are attacking and uh it's it's a great game can you give any other teasers because there are some other interesting tidbits about the game or do you want to keep yeah that let's talk about no because like, because who, it's it's who is who has worked on it yeah so the, now this is mention? an interesting little detail um um i did not do um all the art for the game um Andrew Bosley did Yay, a lot of the art for the game. Him. He did the character art for the game and the yeah. cover for the game. And uh, his characters are just awesome. 
I'm really excited to show those. But I did the the setting, the, the, setting, the, setting the tiles, tiles. Yeah. the environment, and the graphic design for the cards and so all that stuff. It's a fun cooperative project. So yeah. designed by T. Alex Davis, art by Andrew Bosley and yeah. Ryan Lockett. So, and of course, we've all worked on development together, Ryan and Alex and I. And yeah, we're really looking forward to that one coming out. It's lots of fun. Okay, um, the frog coins are the best coins yet, hands down. <laughs> I bought two packs of them. Oh. Can we get cat coins too? <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Thank you. Actually, the frog coins are my favorite too. Those actually, Ryan got some first mock-ups of those and he was like, no, these aren't good enough. I know. And we had to go back to the drawing board. So he, he put a lot of effort into making sure that those frog coins were perfect. Um, he was not going to have shoddy work on those. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Randy replies, he, he was saying that you should do uh, video or computer games. He says, that's cool. I'm an indie game developer in my free time. Most of the games I've made are for game jams done in 48 hours. Oh. The art in a game is something I'd love to see. Wow, that's awesome. I've always been fascinated by that. Like That sounded like a lot of fun, doing a game jam. Let's see. I have to say, can I just make a comment about this? Like, I miss being at the booth, but there is something so fun. Like, I wish that the booth could feel a little bit more like this. Yeah. We're like, we're all hanging to, out together. We're having this big discussion. There's like a back and forth. It's a little this more is... chaotic at the booth, isn't it? Yeah. And we really get to like have <laughs> a second to painting. like chat rather than just like, hello, what's your question? Nice to see you. Goodbye. Like, it's just. I know. <laughs> so... <laughs> There's a little of that. So this is great. There's a bonus to, to this format. So thank you everyone for participating because this is a lot of fun. Okay, my first exposure to your work. I should probably like read these silently before I read them. Someone's like, hey, so Mallory, you. your voice is really grating. Can you have Ryan read the comments? <laughs> Be like, oh. <laughs> okay, my first exposure was near and far. I've expanded Let's the game see. and added three more to my collection. Beyond Excited for Sleeping Gods and now for November. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Soul unknown, forever a loyal fan, and thrilled for the future of your work. Thank you. We ha we would have Thank nothing so without much. fans. We just feel so grateful and indebted to all of the support supporters and fans that not only buy our games but just give us confirmation that we're making things that are worthwhile for you guys to play. So that's awesome. Um, that game sounds similar to your Haven. Which game? Uh, um, the team game? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, so I guess much. that's that's true, except that yeah. it's um, it's for up to six players. Yeah. So two v two or three v three, um, that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Haven. Alf Siegert. That is. Haven's one of my favorite Alf Siegert designs, but it's hard to choose a favorite. His stuff is so unique and so awesome. Yeah. Um. Care to share which uh. Which ward you guys attend? Right now, none. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing open. Uh, let's see. Any plans on duoing with Alf Secret for another project soon? Oh, always wish to. Alf is a very yeah. busy person, but I know he has some. We're busy he's too, though. To, to be fair, he. There's always yeah. stuff we're talking about working on with him, but um, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's just uh, we all it's hard wish to, to it's hard to keep up on all the projects. Yeah, it's just so much. Yeah. But yeah, always love Alf Siegert. So and again we mentioned this yesterday, but he even made some time to write a little cameo story in Sleeping Gods. Yeah. Which is delightful. It's surprising and and like quirky, just like Alf Siegert's other stories. Yeah, it was a it was such a great addition to the Sleeping Gods storybook. Yeah, totally. Um, let's see, frog coins are my favorite of any components I have. Thanks, Nick. Awesome. If you decide to do future streams, I'll show up. Thanks, John. You've been a great participant in this too. So you gave us some really fun things to talk about. Man, I'm really. This is discovery painting, folks. I don't know what I'm doing. I I'm love just it. Like... It's a beautiful <laughs> person. Like, 
like whoever this turns I'm out to be like, is intriguing. I'm just like just trying to decide what this is. So probably the conversation is just so interesting. Ryan's getting distracted. I know. Hey, I just wanted to say I love so many of your games. They're always a good time. Um, how many take place in the same world? So the world is called Arzium. Well, there, so, so how many one of the are settings. In yeah. So one of the settings is Arzium. And uh, in Arzium, let's see, City of Iron, Above and Below, Near and Far, uh, Rome, and Islebound. Islebound all take place in that setting. Yeah. The other games are in a different setting, um, kind of their own thing. So Ancient World, we kind of assume might be semi-tied to, didn't we kind of think? Or am I, well, like, the ancient world. Well, okay. So if we want to get really technical here, the ancient world setting is in the same setting as um, Haven. As Haven. Yeah. You'll and, even notice uh, some art that is that is similar. Like you can you can kind of recognize certain scenes that may be in the same world between ancient world and Haven. Yeah. Um, John mentions the Quackalope theory again. Defense is the prequel to Empires of the Void. <laughs> Stop saying things about Empires of the Void. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the, let's see. And then technically, um, oh, yeah. Artifacts Inc. and Sleeping Gods are in the same setting because they're both set in 1929. Although Sleeping Gods is its own, kind of goes into its own world. Right. But they're both set in on Earth they in 1929. They start on Earth 1929. So that's a good point. It's like the 1929 setting. Yeah, so um, the Mockingbird says, that's a fun way to spell that. Um, just observing that a lot of the aliens in Empires of the Void look like they could be from Arzian. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's the the Toad people, and so oh. there is definitely a, a, a link there. And then the pack animals next to the buildings and above and below look a lot like the beast that the princess rides on in Eight Minute Empire in eight Lost Empire. Lands. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, some of these are just so related to Ryan's imagination. Martha wants to know a little bit about the character you're drawing. This, wow, this character has changed a lot since the beginning. It Tell is. I'm, I'm just trying to like decide where I'm going with this <laughs> character. But uh, this character, I don't know, honestly. It's it's kind of, maybe there's like a synthetic quality to this character. like um, Or like an ethereal element to it. It's a very to, to, symmetrical to and very like placid look on it's got the like face there's and... like a sort of a, i was going in my head i was going for sort of a porcelain mm. looking character um we'll see how that turns out but yeah it's a little bit this can be fun the mm. discovery painting you know yeah has anybody ever done any discovery writing where you just sit down you have no idea what you're going to write about and you just let the words come and, and you just see where the story goes. That's kind of the same thing. Um, let's see. Okay. Here's one. I'm in the middle of designing a storytelling deck builder, but have plenty of other game designs in mind, and it takes me off focus. Do you go through the same, and have you found a way to focus? Um, I kind of like the creative... Um, so I have different, uh, what's the word, like creative, um, uh, settings. <laughs> so sometimes I'll be in a mode where I'm just coming up with all sorts of ideas. And that's actually one of my favorite times. Um, and that lasts until I really end up liking one of those ideas. And that's when I decide, okay, now it's time to focus. And the way I focus is basically the, the project I'm working on becomes so um, like captivating and the challenge of finishing it becomes so captivating that I can't work on anything else. And that's just what I got to do until I finish it. And I think there's a fear there that I will never finish it if I keep moving on to other things. And so I just like, I just focus in on that to try to to do it. But yeah, it can be hard, I think, to focus on one project. There are so many good questions coming in. I, 
I'm sorry if we don't get to all of them, but I'm just going to snag this one because it's so funny to me. Okay. Um, what would a Red Raven agility game look like? <laughs> do you want yeah, to confess your deep, dark secret? Well, I've wanted to do one for a long time, and I have... You've designed a bunch. I designed a prototype <laughs> recently um, because it was supposed to be thematic, you know, like uh, where you're shooting the monsters, you know, like you're, you're like shooting alien monsters to survive. And uh, that, so I included a sort of a dexterity element. But to be honest, I'm a little scared of doing a dexterity game. Uh, I'm afraid that, I'm like worried that people wouldn't, a lot of people, it would turn off a lot of people. Because I always want to mix it with a strategy game, you know? And the two, I don't know if the two mix. <laughs> How many people out there love dexterity games? Like, I don't have a very big sampling of how many people oh a lot of people do and how many people have like kind of disinterest or how many people hate them like i don't have a good measure for that i think a lot of people do i think what what worries me when i'm designing them is that i'm trying to combine the strategy element like mm -hmm. a lot of strategy with dexterity game and um i think it's a little it's kind of a weird mix mm -hmm. So um, Martha's replying to you about discovery writing. She says, not discovery writing, but definitely discovery sketches. Oh, a line, that could be a leg. Uh -huh. So another discovery artist. Everyone is asking about your art. They okay. want posters. How do they get posters? Oh. If they're in Europe, they can't really just order straight from art. Like I see. a Ryan Luckett art series. Yeah. Um, we tried something. Kind we need to do of more like, like that. We need to do more Empires stuff like that. Empires of the Void too, where we did the making of book, and with Sleeping well, Gods and Max Journal, that was a way for Ryan to throw a bunch of his sketches. His um, gosh, now my I'm mind's blinking. What is the word? No, it's it's beautiful. Keep going. I love it. Um, concept art that maybe didn't make it into the game. We were able to put that in through Max Journal, and it was like her exploration of the world, um, that one character. So that's true. There's a lot of art, but I think I think people are talking about more. buying art prints. Yeah, and some, yeah, uh, like posters. We do or, have some of those available on a link on our website, but I think I think the person we probably want to do in more. Europe, so they oh, it's, so a they, it's more hard to do that. Yeah, yeah. maybe we, we'll have to do. Maybe we'll do a Kickstarter that's just art. Oh, that could be fun. Just a little yeah. side Kickstarter to say, hey, you can yeah. get. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, let's see. So many. Okay, so many comments. Let me just skim. Uh, let me give you a question to chat okay. about while I skim the rest. Let's see. About what percent of the prototype games you make actually make it all the way to the store shelves? I would say these days it feels like 10%. No, more like 20%. Do you think 20? I bet 20%. Okay, so there's a lot of reply about dexterity games. Seems like a lot of people like them. Um, there's a comment, dexterity games aren't my thing. I play video games and sports for yeah, dexterity. I think that's true. So, some people. But some say, you know, I'd buy a dexterity or any other game, game you put your name on. <laughs> Are there any other central mechanics you've wanted to work into a game that haven't worked out yet? Um, hmm. yeah, and people are mentioning Catacombs, Look em Up Dead, Meeple Circus, Pitch Car, yeah, A lot of people have Catacombs. We have Catacombs, We have too. Catacombs. I like that one. Yeah, um, it would be fantastic if he came out with an art compendium. I would snag that up. Hmm. Okay, dexterity games can't be played in my group. We have a couple of people who are unable to play. Um, let's see. Yeah, art books. <laughs> How many Ferraris would I have to pay to commission a painting? <laughs> I don't know, ask our eight-year-old daughter she wants a Ferrari. <laughs> who knows why or where she got that idea. But <laughs> she wants a Ferrari, so let's see. Kickstarter for art. Kickstarter for a small video game. Randy's back with the video game idea. He's I like, know. hey, hey, video games. Hey, remember? 
It's funny because I, I, I actually back a lot of Kickstarter video games and just watching how many of them have so much trouble finishing the game has scared me away from it. Mm. I am loving this character. Okay. I love how yeah. unique this character is because it doesn't seem to fit like any like any notions that I had of where you were going with this character at the beginning. <laughs> You're going yeah. in completely different directions, and yet this person has, like, a captivating presence. You know, I yeah. want to know what the story is. I want to know more. I want to see more. So I'm liking it. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. I saw a couple more comments that I thought. Yeah, a Kickstarter for art would be great for people in Europe. Um, yeah. Any chance of adding Max Journal to my current Kickstarter order? It should still be possible through the I, box, but It might be too late, actually. Too late? Yeah. But we do have extra copies, so they will be, I mean, either on our website or somehow. Somehow we'll make those extra copies available to order. Yeah. Um, <laughs> given we are all board gamers, you should do neoprene mats on the Kickstarter with art. Oh, so yeah. Everybody wants the mats with the mats art. Mats with the art. Yeah. Um, art for my walls because art books get dusty. Brenna is a fan of this character too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh oh, with that hairdo, he was starting to look like Gold Ducat. I was like, hmm, that's kind of a Cardassian hairdo. <laughs> <laughs> We've been watching a little Deep Space Nine. Nerd confession. Okay. Can we collectively name this character as a chat group? Uh, Ooh. Let's Here's see. Here's a question. I, need to, I, I think I need to fix some things here. How are you both doing during this pandemic? Doing well, question mark, asks Ryan. Um, How are you doing, Ryan? We're doing pretty good. I think we're, we're pretty fortunate, actually. So I can't complain too much. Oh, yeah. We feel very fortunate. Although that reminds me of another comment I read just a few minutes ago about how it's really difficult for people to play board games right now. Yeah. And they're, like, wishing for online versions. And yeah. We, um, yeah, we totally understand that. Yeah. I mean, it's we're been hard to, to play test. And <laughs> it's true, but it's been hard to play test. Um, one of the challenges has been playtesting some of the recent games with more than two people has been it's been hard and and so like you i can get a quite quite a ways uh on development and uh then like a weird problem shows up that we didn't realize was there yeah brenna answered yeah it's uh, she's brenna's got the um the latest info on exactly where the uh crowd ox is so yeah. she says, yeah, it is a little too late to add anything Okay. to current Kickstarter orders. But that's a good sign in a way. So it yeah, means we're, we're getting, closer. getting closer. So yes. yes, anything we have left over that isn't a Kickstarter exclusive, which I don't think we have much of in, in Sleeping Gods this time. Yeah. If we have leftovers, they, they'll be available. Ryan, have you played the Banner Saga? The art is so good. It has been on Kickstarter a couple of years back. Yeah, I have played it. I've, I only played the first one, though. And I really want to play the... There's a part two and three, I think, that I haven't played. But I love the art. I love the... It's. It reminded me of uh, Sleeping Beauty, actually. Mm -hmm. um, the The environment art, it's like... It's very geometric, but it's got this interesting texture the same way that you can, if you ever watch Sleeping Beauty, it's, it's got a similar art style in the background paintings. So, yes. Okay, we've got some, uh, some other suggestions yeah, for gonna... art, art books, Get art neoprene, and with the writing and art shops present, what about a children's book? <sighs> yeah, yes. We're always talking. Again, you know what? All these ideas are so fantastic, and... Would that we were six people between the two of us and yeah. nine people between the three of us, Brenna and Ryan and I think me. these are all things I'd love to do. Oh, I'd love to. Um, maybe down the road. Emperor Mad says, name him Duke Gulcat. <laughs> Gulcat. 
kind of flipped around. That's, That's funny. funny. He looks like a Bruce. Bruce, mm -hmm. huh? Okay, I've been playing lots of. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing a lot of solo games and two player during the pandemic. Soloing is a great way to learn the rules more efficiently. I'm a bit sad I can't play more Red Raven games solo. Sleeping Gods will be solo applicable, right? Yeah. That's nice. Uh, but yeah. Let's see. We've got a Gerald or Gerard. I think Gerard. we're zeroing in a little bit. Gerard kind of. Well, this character may change. Like so. mystery. I know. Ryan's giving I'm up. Kind oh, of the exploring. hair. I know. There it goes. We're going to see what oh, happens no. when it's, there's no hair. Save the hair. I liked the hair. Um, let's see. Been doing more piano lately. Yes. We chatted a little bit about that yesterday. Lots of piano coming through. Um, is it a him or a her or something outside or in between that? That's exactly what I'm thinking. It's like, it's so unique because it's not like a just stereotypically masculine character. There's What's so interesting much is like to this character, but like a deep, interesting persona is really coming out. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see, folks. He looks like a spot. <laughs> so is that why you got rid of the I black hair? Were you st I was starting to get like a vampire vibe a little bit because of yeah. the nose peak. Was, it, maybe. I don't know. I was kind of going for... Well, now it's kind of... I'm feeling an android vibe thing, but... i got to put like weird chords out of the back. Don't be freaked out too much by this, this thing I'm painting. <laughs> Now Ryan's just going to try to freak everybody out. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, do you plan on having any updated playthroughs of Sleeping Gods? The last ones were uploaded over a year ago, and some of the game's mechanics have changed a bit. They have, and uh, we may do that. But I, I feel like I don't want to... We've, we've kind of... I kind of want to let players experience that for the first time themselves. So but maybe I the should game... do it. I don't know. It's I've been back and forth on that. So much of what we loved about creating the game was um, just the surprise of the story. Just the experience of discovering what happens. And so we've been so much more reluctant to release anything, even to like show you what's coming, if we are concerned that it will give away some of that fun exploration and discovery of the right. story so we will do our best to keep keep things coming but at the same time we've been so protective of that moment of discovery for all of you players yeah uh let's see as a woman with a buzz cut i support reading characters with short hair is not necessarily meant see oh no what happened to spock I Gerard, need, I, no, Gerard I'll go, Spock Delcat. I'll, I'll go back. I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back a little later. Yeah. Sometimes I, I need a little. Uh, it's like, you know, uh, I, I did that. It's time for some else. I can't see where I'm going with this. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to bring him back when or her back when he she is done. Yeah. When they are done, let's give it a, a they pronoun and just. This is a discovery painting, yes. so I okay. don't know where I'm going. But Brenna says she's also a fan of robots. And I'm assuming Android. Seven. Yeah. Uh, a let's play might be good to teach how to play. Partner with Rodney Smith. Yeah, where where are we? Rodney is working on something for events now. We're, um, we're always talking with Rodney about which games to. You know, uh, so. we have some plans to work with him on some videos, but yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing concrete. Okay, uh, Douglas says do it. You can just do the arcade mode, so it shows the updated mechanics without spoiling the story. Mm. Okay. But then do we spoil Ira's arcade mode by doing well, that? Well, you know, his arcade <laughs> mode is so... No, I mean, it wouldn't spoil that. We could okay. do that. We could do that. Okay. It's not... You know, his arcade mode isn't... Uh, it's it's a pretty different experience than the, the actual game. Um, so I think we could probably do that. Oh, no. We're almost out of time. Let's see, I appreciate you wanting to protect the discovery for all of us, I'm a huge fan, and I've never been more excited for a game than Sleeping Gods. So glad to hear that. Oh my gosh, it almost broke us to make that game. <laughs> Actually, maybe it did break us, and we're just like, we, we put casts on our... No, we're <laughs> on okay. On our soul. 
Right. It was so much work, and we're so excited that it will finally be coming out. We're very glad, and thank you for all the support. At Brenna Aslan agreed. There are some awesome women characters without super long hair. Excellent article recently about terrible gender norms in games. I know. We are always really appreciative of people who push us to stretch and uh, get new ideas and new characters and uh, new personalities represented in, in games. Yeah. Bummer, any secrets you'd Let's like see. to drop before you leave, says Corey. I know Corey was here for yeah. Um. Well... I'll be here for we'll just stay for a little bit longer hey you know what i and maybe ryan will hate sometimes so I, can I say let me let me let me let me, to let me things, print let me let me paint at least something, something somewhat can... coherent at the end here <laughs> um so what is there anything that you want to see tomorrow like we haven't really shown anything sleeping gods but i mean we've got well, we've done like, some video. We did the that... unboxing video. Sure, sure. But for this live stream, just to kind of chat about it and have people ask questions, is there anything you'd like to, like, see from Sleeping Gods? Hmm. Uh, let's see. Love your games and art, Ryan, says Darren. Thank you. Um, drawing little cottonwood now? Actually, it looks a little like a canyon. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, Russell, thank you. Russell says, as a non-artist, this is like watching magic. You guys are great. Thank you. You're great, Russell. And so's your daughter. Thanks for sharing her. <laughs> oh. Something go here. You're like, okay, I've spent an hour working on this one character, so now let me whip out something coherent in the last five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Live stream of the Honestly. Lockett family playing games. <laughs> It might be too chaotic. Our children are very intense. <laughs> but it's a fun idea. Yeah. It can be fun. They have a they have a somewhat short attention span. Um, it seems like they have a shorter attention span when I am there trying to play with them. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, play the game. And uh, it can be hard sometimes. <laughs> Brian, perfect answer. What I want, what I most want to see from Sleeping Gods is a shipping notice, of course. But I imagine you yeah. all want that too. Greatly looking forward to this game. <laughs> As someone who has some talent in drawing, says Martha, this is still like watching magic. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Oh, do you consider Sleeping Gods your masterpiece, like your legacy? Hmm... That is a good question. It's hard to say. I think the game turned out. It's projects like that. You know, it's hard. I don't think I could ever label one of my own things that I made a masterpiece, because the truth of it is, um, I probably could have worked on that for another twenty years. You know. You always want to. That's how. It, that's how it and is. Make things better. But even that, it's, you know, I think I just have to let people decide what they think of it. I think what we can honestly say is we are very we, pleased that we were able to accomplish what we were trying to accomplish with that game. Yeah. Getting the cooperative experience, getting the open world feel, yeah. getting the characters to have stories that progressed throughout the storybook having all of those elements work together and come together for an actually functional fun hopefully a successful experience for those who play like that yeah 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 very pleased that it worked <laughs> um yeah randy had to go and adult now i know we always kind of feel like yeah there's a lot of things to do <laughs> oh. i should probably end it here but uh yeah let's see uh, I can make a version of Deep Fence with quirky fish characters instead of real fish. <laughs> uh, is Sleeping Gods everything you wanted it to be? I think we kind of answered that. So Arius was right on yeah. kind of where we were talking. Um, oh, it's awesome that Empires of the Void for Red Raven is to Twilight Imperium for uh, Final Fantasy. Space games invent board game companies. 
interesting interesting mm. insight yeah uh, will Red Raven Games start shipping internationally so in the UK so we can order from the site that might be a question we'll have to look into we'll have to look into that, that. Um, it's been one of the difficult things has just been figuring out how to make all of this work in the in current we, event times yeah. we we probably started focusing on the website a little bit more because of the events of this year and yet that does present some limits that we wouldn't have had had we just kind of started focusing on it in a more normal time so that's definitely part of the goal but apologies for any delays that that inconvenience those of you who want to order yeah <laughs> that was a way longer sentence than it needed to be thanks for the stream yes thanks for being here yeah thanks everybody for joining us and uh we will be back tomorrow what time are we at the same time as no, today or are we it'll be a different again? time i think it'll be a slightly different time different let's see time. let's just look that up real quick um yeah let's see oh there we go okay so tomorrow This will open up. <laughs> I can't see what's going on. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's see. It'll be Tomorrow's four o'clock. Yeah, four o'clock uh, oh. Eastern time. Uh, we'll be Poor Eastern. here together chatting, and Brenna Eastern. will join us, and uh, maybe maybe some other people too. So please come back and uh, hang out. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you. And, See you tomorrow. Uh, have a great day. See you later.